This is the seventh video in our series, looking at how we set up and configure a Synology NAS running DistStation Manager 7. Now that we've installed DistStation Manager and initialized our new hard drives, let's take a tour to familiarize ourselves with the user interface of our NAS. However, before we start, let's make sure that we have correctly configured our administrator's account by logging out of DistStation Manager and then trying to log back in. In order to log out of DistNation Manager, we will need to select the profile icon in the top right hand corner of the DSM window. Then from the drop down menu that appears, if we select the option Sign Out, we will be shown the sign in page to our NAS. Now by entering the administrator's name that we created in our previous video, followed by its password, we should be returned to the DistNation Manager desktop. If for some reason you're not able to log back into your NAS, you can perform a reset which will return the administrator's credentials back to their defaults along with any system settings that you may have set. As you can see, when we log back into our NAS, we are being offered an extended warranty from Synology. However, as this warranty will be an additional cost, its value will be dependent on the individual. As the system software, used in all models of Synology NAS, is a variation of Linux, you should find that the user interface to the station manager looks similar to that of the operating system being used by your computer. Let's start by taking a look at Package Center, which can be best described as Synology's equivalent to an app store. The term package simply refers to a piece of software or a service that can be downloaded and installed onto our NAS. So it is through Package Center that we can extend the functionality of our NAS beyond that of just being a file server. However, as Synology have verified that everything in Package Center will work with their hardware, you might find that certain applications or pieces of software are not available for your model of NAS. So while it is possible to install software onto your NAS that is not in Package Center, we recommend that you avoid this practice or use something called Docker. If we select Installed, we are shown the packages that were installed by default when we first set up our NAS. While most of these packages are required in order for our NAS to work, it is also here that we can run, stop or uninstall any applications or services. Next, we have Control Panel, which is where we can adjust the system preferences and settings for our NAS. As you can see, Control Panel is divided into four areas, File Sharing, Connectivity, System and Services. Then under these four headings, we have a subset of settings relating to our NAS. As we go through the process of configuring our new NAS, we will be spending a lot of time in Control Panel. So for now, let's move on to File Station. File Station in the DSM is equivalent to File Explorer in Windows or Finder in macOS. So it is from within File Station that we can perform tasks on files and folders stored on our NAS. However, as we've only just started to set up our NAS, before FileStation will work, we will need to create network shares for our NAS to use. So as we will be creating network shares in a future video, for now we're simply going to close FileStation. DSM Help, as the name suggests, is a resource designed to help us set up our new NAS. So we have a number of categories that, when we select one, will walk us through the configuration of a specific function on our NAS. While DSM Help is much improved over previous versions, it is still very basic and may not always provide you with information that would be considered best practice when setting up a NAS. In the top left side of the DSM, we have something called Main Menu, which if we select it, will display the services and applications that have been installed onto our NAS. It is also from here that we can open an application 
or adjust a specific services settings. To the right of the main menu, we have the task bar, which will display the icons for any applications that we currently have open. However, if we regularly use a specific application, we can pin that application to our taskbar so that we can access it more quickly. To do this, if we open an app, and then right click on that app's icon, a quick menu will appear. Now by selecting pin to taskbar, the icon for that app will remain in the taskbar even after the app has been closed. While this is a very useful function, as we can more quickly open apps that we regularly use, it is worth noting that when an app is updated, the icon will automatically be unpinned from the taskbar, so this feature may only be of limited value. Let's unpin this app from our taskbar by right-clicking on the icon and selecting Unpin from Taskbar. To the far right of the taskbar, we have a series of four icons. Notifications will display basic information regarding the completion or failure of tasks performed by our NAS. So for example, after completing a backup, the NAS will issue a notification confirming the success or failure of that backup. Personal relates to specific information about the profile that we use to log into the DSM. So because we are currently signed in with our administrator's account, we also have an option to restart and shut down our NAS. However, if we had logged in with a standard user's account, the menu options displayed would only show the logout command. Widgets are small windows that remain fixed to our desktop and display useful information about our NAS. By default, two widgets are displayed. System Health and Resource Monitor. However, we can also enable a number of additional widgets by selecting the plus icon in the top right hand corner of our widgets bar. If we select one of the other widgets listed, that widget will be stacked into our widgets bar. In order to remove a widget from the widget bar, we simply need to remove the tick from the widget list. If needed, we can move the widget bar to different places on the desktop. We can also increase or decrease the space that the widget bar takes up. As we prefer to keep our desktop as clutter-free as possible, we're going to minimize the widget bar, which will hide it from view. Finally, we have Search, which will allow us to search the files and folders stored on our NAS. However, as we've not yet set up any shared folders, the Search function is currently not working. So to recap, in this video, we took a tour of the Distation Manager desktop. This was to help familiarize ourselves with our work area and get a general idea for what the main menu, package center, control panel, file station, and the taskbar actually do. In the next video in this series, we're going to start to configure our NAS by assigning it with a static local IP address.